I am the greatest. I said that even before I knew I was. Wise words from one Muhammad Ali back in 1964 originally. However, Floyd Mayweather begs to differ. We know he calls himself TBE for the best ever. Well, in an appearance Monday on ESPN Deportes, Floyd was asked to rank his top five boxers of all time. Here is his list. Might surprise you a bit. Number one, Floyd Mayweather. No Number surprise. two, Roberto Duran. Three, Pernell Whitaker. Four, Julio Cesar Chavez. Number five, Muhammad Ali, Skip Bayless. Your reaction, my friend. Stephen A. Smith. Here's what's going on. You know and I know that your man Floyd Mayweather Jr. cannot stand it that Muhammad Ali is widely regarded as the greatest boxer ever. Floyd believes he should have that perch atop all boxers. He does believe it. He does, and he put himself number one on this list. Mm -hmm. So he now continues to go out of his way to downgrade and criticize the great, the greatest Muhammad Ali. And it comes across to me as just purely pathetic. Do you remember what he told you about Ali's strategy to rope a dope George Foreman, mm -hmm. Rumble in the Jungle? Remember yeah, that? Yeah, when we were in his Bentley driving. Well, that's exactly when it was. Strip. Could we hear that, that's please? Right. We've got it. Listen, let me hear it. You don't believe that Muhammad Ali is was better than you? How? He only fought in one weight class. Leon Spinks beat him when he had seven fights. They had never put a fight in there with Floyd Mayweather with seven fights. So you're gonna tell me that it's cool to lay on the ropes and take punishment, let a man tire himself out from beating you, and then he basically fatigued, you hit him with a few punches, and then he go down and quit, and, and you wanna be glorified for that? Love it. Oh, Stephen A. You, you want to be glorified for what is widely regarded as the, mo the, the greatest strategic victory in the history of boxing. What Ali did to a man that we thought might actually kill him in the ring. Am I right about that? That's correct. There were people in Ali's camp yes, that they were, were crying before he walked into the ring because they thought he was going to die. Wow. But Ali figured it out. He tired out George Foreman and then he knocked him out. I watched it. I stood up and applauded. I, I, I was goosebumped to almost to death myself because it was the greatest thing I've ever seen. My father and cried. Did he? My father cried. He, I'm yeah, sure a lot of the people The biggest cried. Ali fan I've yeah. ever seen in my life, and he really, uh, really thought that uh, my father was scared for Ali's life. That's how menacing. Everybody yes. talk about Mike Tyson and his prime. Uh -huh. There was nobody more menacing in boxing history than George Foreman. No one. Nobody, especially at that moment. Yes. It took so much out of his psyche that it took a long time for George Foreman to sort of build right. himself back into being George Foreman right. after that. And, and yet, how can Floyd dare to disrespect him the way he just did to you driving around in his Bentley in Las Vegas? And, and how can he dare leave off his list two other fighters who, who so belong in the top five in Sugar Ray Robinson and Sugar Ray Leonard. Both. Mm -hmm. Both. Both. And how can you leave Joe Frazier out of there, who, who fought I Ali could. almost to the death I three could. times? I could leave could him you? out of the Boy, top five. I could leave I could. him out of the top five. Yes, I could. And, and some people would include the early Tyson, just, just how devastating and dominating he was right. up to that point of Buster Douglas. Right. Some would put him in. How could you put a Roberto Duran at number two Remembering that after he quit in the second fight in New against Orleans Sugar against Ray. Sugar Ray, right. no he, he went on after No Mas to lose 14 more fights, and you have him at number two on your list? Now that was and, that, Come on. You, you can't. Well, 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 it's well, laughable. Well, well, you finish? Go ahead. Because what I'm saying is this. I agree with you in terms of Roberto Duran, but keep in mind, hands of stone was something special before he moved up in weight. Mono I mean, this dude, I mean, at the That's welterweight, yeah. at the welterweight division, I'm sorry, at the lightweight division, Roberto Duran was one of the most menacing fighters we've ever seen. This brother was on another level. So when you look at it from that saying, I mean, I, I, I go back, you know how much I love my boxing. I think about uh, a, a Pepino Cuevas before he got knocked out okay. by birds. I think about a Salvador Sanchez mm -hmm. before he died. I think it was in a plane crash or whatever. Wilfredo Benitez was big time. I mean, there's some few names, you know, you're you taking me back to, I love me some boxing. But I would definitely talk about Sugar Ray Robinson and Sugar Ray Leonard definitely being in top five. 
There's no question in my mind about it. And even though he's not in the top five, I would put Larry Holmes before I put Joe Frazier, believe it or not. Okay. Larry Holmes, that jab was sensational. I, I hear you. He didn't lose. It, it, in Floyd's heart of hearts, he would put all those guys in his top but, five, but, too. Me, but he doesn't want to no, because he wants to discredit their legacy. When it comes to boxing, again, I don't hang with Floyd anything, but when it comes to boxing, I'm a brother he talks to. And I'm telling you right now, he ain't joking. He believes he's the best. But here's why. He doesn't believe in boxing being about who you knock out. He doesn't. He detests the 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 Arturo Gatti, Andre Ward blood yes. fest, mm -hmm. the Rocky oh, Balboa no. mystique <laughs> of boxing, where you taking blows, both eyes are shut, and you're the underdog and coming out of nowhere and throwing haymakers. Floyd detests that. Floyd is quick to remind the world this is boxing. It's not just about pugilism. It's about skill. It's just supposed to be about hitting and not getting hit. Mm -hmm. And you can knock Floyd for not knocking out a bunch of folks. Mm -hmm. But what you can't deny is his defensive wizardry, the magician that he is in the ring as a defensive fighter. He's just magnificent and skilled in that way. So when he sees somebody like Ali, <clears throat> and Floyd would never say this, but I'll say this for him. Yep. When he sees Ali, God bless him, walking around now, suffering from Parkinson's. Mm -hmm. Floyd obviously believes that that's a byproduct of the punishment that Ali took. So that that infiltrates his thoughts. Okay. You put yourself through this. See, I, his, his attitude is, I'm going to be just fine when I walk away. I might have had a swollen lip once or twice, a uh, busted nose, but that's about it. He said, I'm going to be just fine when I walk away this, from this game. Look at him. He can't say that because he knows how it would come across. But that's what he's thinking. He looks at a guy like George Foreman, mm -hmm. got outsmarted. He's like, that was never me. He looks at Mike Tyson, who he knows doesn't partic isn't particularly fond of him. He knows how great Mike Tyson was. But he also saw the Buster Douglas. He saw the Vander Holyfield. And the way Mike Tyson ended his career when he got dropped by no name. And it wasn't because he was hurt. He was out of shape and tired. Mm -hmm. And literally, literally skipped. And he, I love me some Mike Tyson, the boxer. But let's be clear. Mike Tyson was on his behind. And literally, totally lucid, not even hurt. Mm -hmm. Just out of shape. Yeah. Literally leaned his arm, lifted, put his arm up for the referee to help him up. Which was hysterical. You know, you know help me up here. That's what he was doing. So Floyd looks at something like that mm -hmm. and he's saying, really? These cats can mess with me? And you know how you know that what I'm saying is exactly what he believed? Because as great, as great as this fighter that I'm about to mention was, who would have thought to put Pernell Whitaker at number three? Nobody, nobody would have thought about no, Pernell nobody. Whitaker. But I got news for you. Pernell Whitaker was a sensational boxer. I mean, he was a magician in the ring before Floyd was, he, he as was, a defensive one. He, he got robbed. And by the way, he, was. he got robbed mm -hmm. against Julio Cesar mm -hmm. Chavez. He beat Julio Cesar Chavez, okay? The funniest part about that interview was when Magic Johnson was interviewed before the fight, and they said, pick him. And Magic was like, Magic was like oh, it's Julio Cesar. Ooh, he said, but Pernell's my boy, but it's Julio Cesar Chavez, but Pernell's my boy. I, I, I can't, I can't, I can't. And that's exactly how Magic did it. It was hilarious because that was the boxing world. They didn't know which way to go. And, but nobody would have thought of putting Pernell Whitaker at number three. The fact that Floyd put him there shows you what Floyd's thinking is. It's about your ability to box, not punch somebody or out punch okay. somebody. Okay, what does Stephen A. Smith think? Is Floyd Mayweather Jr. a greater boxer than Muhammad Ali no, was? No, no, because I don't think the competition that Floyd faced mm was tantamount to what Ali faced, okay? And I do believe there's something to be said for having both offense and defense. And I think that Floyd comes up short offensively than defensively, but he's so brilliant in the ring, I would easily put Floyd top five, mm -hmm. yeah. but I couldn't put him before Muhammad Ali. And you know me, Ali under the duress that he was under. Mm. because of not going into the Vietnam War, because mm -hmm. yeah. of being a member of the Nation of Islam, because of the vitriol that was aimed in this direction, mm -hmm. where you had so many folks in America rooting for Joe yep. Frazier mm -hmm. because of their discomfort with Muhammad Ali. For him to overcome all those obstacles. Now, last point, and they played this when I had interviewed Floyd around that time, right before yep. the Pacquiao fight. Floyd believed, and he said it on the air, that he faces just as much racism and criticism and cynicism as Muhammad Ali. 
I basically personally told him that was ridiculous. That's ridiculous. No, that that's ridiculous. But he believes. Okay. You have to say he believes all right. it. And all I, the only thing I'm gonna say in his defense is this: he ain't making it up. He really does believe this. Whether you agree with him or not, he ain't faking. Floyd believes this. We've argued about this several times. He believes it. And I believe Commonly he looks has pathetic. a religious piece as well. Obviously, we all know that. So, uh, Skip, before we go, you have Muhammad Ali at number one. Sure. So do I. Both do. I'm never putting anybody against my, oh, no, well, Muhammad Ali. Not in my lifetime. Nobody. Right. Well, now that you've heard Skip and Stephen A's take, we want to carry this debate to Twitter. Let us know what's your reaction to Floyd's list of all-time boxers using the hashtag Mayweather. Top five. Floyd's going to hang it up on September 12th after he fights Andre Berto. Steve Smith is ready to hang it up as well. I don't totally believe that, though. But will he have a bust in Canton? That is the question. The guys debate that on the other side. Stay with us. This is First Takes. I'm a